Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We're here today, weekend edition of the Cabral Concept that we affectionately call our Cabral Host Calls. Hopefully being able to step into your home, answer your questions, whether you submitted them or not. I think that a lot of these questions are pertinent to many people in our community. Maybe not if for you, but someone that you do love and you could share the information with. So what I like to do is I typically answer six questions uh, today on Saturday and six on Sunday as well. Uh, I do answer them in the order they come in, and we are now backlogged over 12 weeks. So I just want you to know that um, my highest recommendation, of course, you can always continue to ask your questions here, uh, but do ask them at cabralsupportgroup.com. Um, if nothing else, you'll get an answer pretty much the same day as to where to start. And then also search for your answer just using one keyword at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, because um, you could type in things like migraines or you could type in progesterone, or you could type in um, Addison's disease, or you could type in POTS, and you'll be able to find all the different house call questions that I've answered. And uh, I'm, I'm willing to bet that, that some of them might be helpful and pretty close to your question as well. All right, so let's dive into today's show. All right, opening up my document right now, and it says... Today is episode 2402, all right? So if you want to read along with the questions, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2402. You can watch this on video or just follow along with the questions. Uh, And of course, if you haven't already subscribed to the show and rated, reviewed the show, I would very much appreciate that. All right, Simon is on first. Simon says, Hello, and thank you, Dr. Paul. As someone who's obsessed with optimizing my health and performance, I've always wondered how I should view donating blood and plasma. Putting aside the great benefit to others, could you explain what the immediate and medium-term impacts on the body of donating blood is? In terms of overall health, mental and physical performance, thanks. Okay, yeah, this is a great question. So uh, I only recommend donating blood for people that have high levels of iron, so uh hemochromatosis, uh, or uh, they are don't, they're, they're giving blood for their annual blood work, or they're doing it to help, of course, others in need. Because it is actually detrimental to your own health, believe it or not. And the reason why I say that now, again, I don't mean that it's like a bad thing, um, but it can be. It can be. And here's why. So the more blood you give, like, so I do, I do, when I do my annual labs, I actually do them semi-annually, so twice a year. Um, I do a lot. Like I, I run everything under the sun. I run my big five labs, which is separate from blood work. And I just like to know all my numbers, but that, that's just me. Again, like I, I'm just, I'm that guy, right? So that's me. Uh, but what happens is this, you are donating some of your life force, right? So all those red blood cells, plasma, it, not all of it, of course, but a fair amount is being taken out of your body. So what else is being taken out of your body? Well, a whole lot of B vitamins, iron, and again, those red blood cells. So that all of that contain oxygen, and all of that is used to fuel and nourish the rest of your body. So I've, I work with a lot of athletes. Um, I am a not an athlete. I'm an amateur, but I enjoy uh I just enjoy working out. I enjoy sprint triathlons. I enjoy just being active. And so I've done the research on this, uh, mainly for the athletes that I I have trained and have worked with. And I do look at their blood work and all that. It has been shown that up to three weeks after you give blood, it's detrimental to your performance. So there's a decrease in VO2. I'm pretty sure the decrease in VO2 was almost up to 20%. I think it was like 19% at the last time I read it. So that's quite a decrease in in max VO2, right? So it it absolutely can affect endurance-based sports. 
Um, and again, it can, it can lead to potentially some anemia for a short time as well until those red blood cells get built back up. So, um, and what can that lead to? Well, it can lead to then brain fog and lethargy and low mood and et cetera. So um, hopefully that was helpful. It doesn't mean don't do it, but it does mean like, okay, understand what happens when your body, you know, gets rid of some blood. So hopefully that's helpful. And again, in some instances, it can be very helpful um, with heavy metal poisoning, with uh, high iron, et cetera. All right. So Laura is up next. What could be the reason of a 30-year-old woman on phase three of adrenal dysfunction, adrenal fatigue, with normal levels of estrogen, but high progesterone on a saliva test? Progesterone to estrogen ratio, testosterone and DHEA were all good. I've never seen high progesterone before, so not sure what we should be looking at here. Okay, this is probably from maybe an IHP. Um, so I, I think I explained this in level two during the um, stress at home lab test that I that I teach. So here's why: the only time, almost the only time, I don't want to say I don't want to deal in ultimatums or or absolutes. The only time that we see progesterone levels elevated is typically with higher levels of stress. So you won't always see cortisol elevated, but you'll see the precursor to cortisol, that up there, that 17 hydroxy progesterone, able to be used for stress hormone production in the body. It's the, it's the precursor. And the way that we follow that up is questionnaire, like, are you stressed or not? Are you sleeping? Yes or no? How's your digestion? Uh, overall mood? And we look at the minerals and metals test. So if this person had an elevated uh, calcium or a four low on their electrolytes, that's what you're looking at. So hopefully, Laura, that was helpful. Haley is up next. And, and by the way, so what do you do? Well, you, you, you're you going to decrease stress and lifestyle, binaural beats, meditation, better sleeping program, adrenal soothe, full spectrum magnesium, daily foundation protocol, at least level two or level three, you know, that's what we're going to do. All right. Haley's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I've been, and uh, I can't, I can never stop. Like I always kind of want to give the whole thing, like not really hard exercise, more walking, calming for the body. But anyway, the de-stress protocol, right? All right. Haley's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I've been having issues on and off for a few months with my oral health. Tiny bumps on the end of my tongue that makes it constantly feel raw. My saliva always feels thick and it seems like food gets stuck before it even starts to go down my throat. My throat feels sore most days, like there's a lump when I try to swallow. My gums occasionally bleed when I floss as well. This all started a few months ago with not much different in my routine. I'm not sure where all this is coming in from. I feel like it has really affected my ability to eat, and I'm looking for an idea of what this could be caused by. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, it sounds to me like your entire, um, I don't know if it's ear, nose, and throat, but certainly throat is inflamed. So difficult to swallow, redness, tiny little bumps, thicker saliva. All right. So redness typically means inflammation. Those tiny bumps can be an acidity factor. So inflammation can also cause more anaerobic-based um, saliva, uh, not a good thing, or anaerobic-based bacteria. And then what happens is when there's more inflammation around the gums or tongue or throat, the body actually produces more saliva. It does that for everywhere in the body in terms of mucus. So one of the reasons why you produce more mucus when you get a cold is the, the mucus is not the cold. I always try to share that with people. That's why if you keep trying to get rid of all of your mucus and congestion with decongestants, you're not helping your body to produce the thing that's trying to allow the flow of all of this out of your body and produce more white blood cells, or at least get the white blood cells to where they're supposed to be. So a fever, mucus, again, I don't want them to get out of control. They can be too high, of course, but the mucus is there to actually coat the inflamed area and remove and bring um, different white blood cells like IgA, immune, <coughs> excuse me, immunoglobulin A uh, white blood cells to the area. I have a little sip of my uh, decaf here. I was the last zip, so hopefully my throat's okay. <laughs> I actually, we're talking about throat, and I had this psycho psychosomatic uh, uh, symptom myself right here. All right, so um, in all serious, no, serious this though, we really want to work on your overall immune system. 
And again, so I have to give my disclaimer. I can't provide any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, or medical diagnosis. If it were me, I would be doing something like fire cider gargling or sea salt gargling uh, with warm water. Um, definitely that's what I would be doing. I would be drinking some warm or hot ginger tea. Uh, peppermint tea would be fine as well. I would also um, be doing some type potentially of a fast, uh, maybe a seven-day functional medicine detox uh, fat fast by Equal Life, um, or you know, maybe just doing a one-day reset diet. I have lots of free podcasts on that. Uh, you may be doing something like the uh, immunity protocol, the alkalizing vitamin C, the vitamin D, and the zinc. Uh, let's see, what else? What else? Um, the throat spray by Nutribiotic, ear, nose, and throat, probably neti pot. That, yeah, the that Nutribiotic throat spray, that's a great one as well. That has the grapefruit seed extract and the, uh, um, the zinc in there. What else? Well, I would start there. You know, that's what I would do. Boost the entire immune system, work specifically on the area. Uh, the fastest lets the body calm down. You're going to get more sleep. And, um, and then I would go from there because who knows? Could have got a virus. Could have Something could have happened and now your body's inflamed in that area. So yeah, that's what I would look at. And if you haven't done something like the clean gut probiotic, we might want to look at that as well. All right, Lisa is up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I have a hard time with alcohol. One glass of wine, I feel buzzed, and I'm curious as to why. Is it a histamine intolerance, or am I missing an enzyme? Liver clogs, can I test for this? Is there anything I can do to handle alcohol a bit better? I simply would like to be able to enjoy two glasses, want to eat out without feeling too tipsy. Appreciate all your knowledge you share on these wonderful podcasts. Yeah, this is a great question. I have lots of lots of podcasts on alcohol, uh, lots of questions on the weekends about this. I've definitely talked about this before. Um, I was probably like subject line, well, you can just type in alcohol and you'd find all my shows on alcohol. So I, I would do that um, as well. Okay, could be histamine. So histamine intolerance right away will hit you like right away. Those histamines get going. So if I eat something like a, what's what's one thing that sets me off? That's not that does my body just does not do well with aged cheese. If I do aged cheese, I get that itchiness right away in the back of my throat. Uh, it's uncanny. So I don't eat aged cheese and I'm fine, right? So it's one of those things. But I understand you want to have some alcohol. So here's the thing. Um, if it only happens with wine, so let me just give you a, again, I'm not telling you what alcohol to drink, but let's say you did a, a um, Tito's vodka. I don't own any stock in Tito's, but it's a gluten-free vodka, right? So let's say you did a Tito's vodka and soda with maybe um, some lime. Oh, lime is going to have some histamines. Okay, so you're doing a Tito's vodka and soda. All right, so if you don't have any big reactions to that, then I'm looking at potentially the histamines, but also with wine, I'm looking at sulfates. And I just did a podcast, well, just did it a couple months back on a sulfate filter. So a lot of people, the actual headaches or tipsiness or whatever it might be, can actually be from all the preservatives in the wine. Wine is loaded with preservatives. I mean, literally loaded with them. And it's, it, they do that so the wine doesn't actually break down and go bad. But um, th so there's a, a self, it's called a selective sulfate filter. So you can definitely check that out at steamcabral.com forward slash podcast or just ask if you can't find the show at cabralsupportgroup.com. Um, so here's, here's what I would do. I mean, this is what I would do. I would look for um, a, I would look for a wine maybe more in France that might use less sulfates, maybe Italy as well. Look for an organic one. Look for maybe one that's biodynamic. They're still going to have sulfates. That's the problem though. And um, they just might have less of them. But let's say you did, again, that, that um, Tito's vodka with nothing really there and you don't feel the same issue with it. Well, you know, to be honest, uh, it could actually be what's going on inside of that. So what could you do? Well, they make an enzyme that you can take before your meal called DAO. It's hard to come by, but it's diamine oxidase. Oh, sorry. Diamine Diamine oxidase. Sorry, there you go. Oxidase, because the ACE is always what breaks down the specific thing. So DAO, you naturally produce it inside your body, but people with gut-based issues uh, or genetic predisposition just don't produce as much of it. That would be me as well. And so um, you'll want to look at that. you want to clean up your gut in the first place, like if you haven't already done a... Um, candida metabolic and vitamins test, I would do that, or I would do the bacteria and parasite stool test. Uh, that's what I would do for sure. Yes, that's what I would do. I would have food before your wine as well to see if you can blunt that alcohol effect. Um, so... 
yeah, hopefully that's helpful. All right, Kelsey's up next. I have a client that burps when she's hungry. She doesn't burp after eating or have acid reflux. Would burping when hungry signal anything? That's a good question. You know, I'm going to do a whole show on uh, what burping means at different times of the day because I know it sounds strange, but a lot of people have a lot of belching and they don't know why. And it can actually signal all sorts of different things. So again, without providing medical advice um, and without going in depth, I at least want to share with you a couple reasons. So if it happens earlier in the morning, um, and even, even, yeah, when she is hungry, I'd look at a couple things. I would make sure, and she might want to see her uh, gastroenterologist for this. She would want to make sure she doesn't have an ulcer, a hiatal hernia, gastritis. I would start there, those three. There can be other issues. I'm just sorry for the silence. I'm, I'm jogging my mind right now, but they're coming back to those main three. Well, the other one is this, and I don't know if this is the case, but when some people have nothing in their stomach and they're nervous, they actually swallow air. I don't know if you've ever heard about this before, but this is a real thing. Like literally it, people, well, people know this because people who know how to like literally belch uh, without, I guess, eating or drinking anything, uh, they know how to get air into their stomach. So let's stay with those four and I will do a full show on this as well. All right, so thanks, Kelsey, for writing in. Is that six questions today? Simon and Laura and Haley and Lisa and Kelsey. Nope, we have one more, Tiffany. Tiffany says, I'm 46 years old and my anxiety is getting worse and affecting my daily life. I feel weak all the time and I get surges of adrenaline at strange times. I get anxiety really badly when driving. I need an appointment, I need an appointment with a functional medicine practitioner. I live in Florida, but would be willing to do telemedicine. I don't know who to reach out to, but I'm starting to get desperate. How can I schedule an appointment? Thank you, Tiffany. Okay, happy to help. Again, can't provide medical advice, but we can find out the underlying root causes that might be causing the body to be unwell right now. And we do this all the time for both mental and physical-based imbalances. So um, there's a couple ways, Tiffany. So for, for example, again, anybody, I always, I always want to be fair, and you don't have to work with myself and my team. You can go to integrativehealthpractitioner.org forward slash practitioners. And you could just go to integrativehealthpractitioner.org and click on practitioners. And you'll find practitioners all over the world that are certified through an organization that I'm the founder of called the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute. We teach people how to find the underlying root cause and balances for people and help them with the protocols in order to help them get well. But you can also work with a naturopathic doctor that's skilled in these particular areas, or you can work with our team. So our team works in two ways, and, and most of our IHPs work in the same way. But you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash health dash coaching, and you can work one-on-one -on -one with us. Now, the other way is, and someone like yourself, Tiffany, which I'd recommend doing, is running the big five. So you can work one-on-one. -on -one or you can run the big five labs, which comes with a 90-minute consultation, which also comes then with a customized, customized plan for you. So, because what we want to do is say, hey, are you low in B vitamins? It's going to cause anxiety. It is. I mean, that's the bottom line. Or what about um, higher levels of copper, lower levels of zinc? Okay, it's going to cause anxiety. Higher levels of cortisol, it's going to cause anxiety, right? Lower levels of thyroid, it's going to cause anxiety. So again, we want to look at all the factors and figure out, we don't know why. I don't know why Tiffany has anxiety, but I know how to find out, right? And so that's what we want to look at. So Tiffany, IHP, naturopathic doctor, uh, stephencabral.com forward slash health dash coaching, or running the big five, which is stephencabral.com forward slash big five. That's the absolute best way. That's how we can help you the most. All right. Thanks, everyone, for writing in today. I'll be back tomorrow answering six more of our community's questions. I hope you've been having a great weekend if you are tuning in when this comes out live. Uh, and again, I will be answering six more questions tomorrow. So come on back. Take care, everyone. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts 
that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.